again, I want to say thank you for each and every one of you for coming today as we come to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we come, I ask that you turn in your Bibles to Luke 1. We're going to read uh, a number of verses today. But looking at Mary, the mother of Jesus, who is a model for mothers today. And we want to uh, think about her and uh, the love that she had, but also the difficulties that she had. You know, so many times we think nobody knows the troubles that we have been through. But when we look at the life of Mary and seeking to be raised Jesus Christ up, we see that she did not have a good life either. She had a very difficult life. And we want to uh, remember this as we come. So as uh, Luke 1, beginning with verse 26, we want to read. In the sixth month, Elizabeth's pregnancy, uh, God sent uh, the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pl pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. He will be this, uh, will be, uh, he, how will this be, Mary said, to the, ask the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel said, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Then skip down to verse 46. This is Mary's song. And look at it, because you know when Mary found out from the angel that she was going to have a baby, she did not understand it. Because she was a virgin. And you can imagine what she must have thought when she thought about all the people who would hear this and all the gossip that would be about. And how Joseph could have her stoned if he wanted to. She had to be scared to death with not knowing and understanding what was all going on. But in verse 46 it says, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful for the humble state of the servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Here as we come, our on Mother's Day, let us look at Mary, the mother of our Lord, as a great model for motherhood today. And yeah, motherhood's under attack today as we look about. But you know, there was a survey done and it was asked, what are the two words you think about most? And out of the uh, thousands that was asked, they said mother and home was the two words that thought about most. But in our day and time, we have so many uh, looking and uh, putting motherhood under attack. But the mother of our Lord is a great role model for mothers today. Let us discover something about her faith and her faithfulness. Let us consider the fruit of her motherhood so that we may identify some factors that contribute to her success as a, uh, as a mother. 
Mary was chosen for a divine mission. She became the mother of Jesus by a miraculous conception. Jesus was born of a virgin, which meant he had an earthly mother, but he had no earthly father. His father was God Almighty. Because of his love for us, God chose to become flesh and blood, and in order to do so, he became a baby born of a miraculous virgin birth. But it's not Mary's virginity alone that qualifies her for becoming Jesus' mother. The eternal God chose to be clothed in human, himself in human our flesh and become a man. He loved us so much. He wanted to give us a second chance. Adam and Eve blew it. And because of that, death came to mankind. And so God so loved us that God sent his only begotten son down to this earth to be born of a virgin, to live, to die, to rise from the grave, to ascend up in heaven so that we might have the gift of eternal life he gives to us. But we want to ask ourselves, why was Mary chosen? We want to look at some of the reasons why. Mary was a devout worshiper of the true God already. You know, so many times when I was in seminary, I'd hear a uh, guy say that when I get out of seminary, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Mary was chosen because Mary was already a devout worshiper of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we wait until things are good or better, we'll never serve God. Because Satan will make sure that we're always having problems. But Mary served the Lord Jesus Christ. She was a devout worshiper of the true God. Mary was pure in mind and heart and body already before she talked to the angel. Mary was humbled and she recognized her dependency upon Almighty God. Mary was obedient to do God's will even though she did not understand that will. How can I, a virgin, have a child? It hasn't ever been done. That's not how it works. You know she had to be afraid. She had to be concerned. She had to wonder with all the uncertainties that that meant to her. But yet, she trusted in the Lord. And she said, let your will be done uh, for me. Mary was thankful that God was going to use her. Even with all the uncertainties, she was thankful that God was going to use her. And Mary was consistent and self-controlled. These qualities need to be made by modern mothers today as well as they were by Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary was not just chosen for a mission. She was chosen to be an example for all mothers. Once Mary knew God's will, she desired to participate and fulfill that will with all that she had in mind. Did she know the beginning from the end? No. Was she scared? Yes. But she prayed even in her scaredness, in her uncertainties, she prayed, God, your will be done. Humanity needs the mercy of God that he gives to us. Humanity, Murray worship God, the merciful God. Humanity needs mercy more than it needs justice today. And you know, we need that today as we come. It's easy to condemn people, but we need the mercy and the justice of God to come for us. God is eager to forgive and help the undeserving. God was great, created God. He is a redeeming God that loves us. And God wants the best for each and every one of us. Even though we don't know what it is. And God wants to guide us. He doesn't want us to have a red carpet. He doesn't uh, make everything easy. But he says he will always be with us no matter what. And he will give us the strength to go through as he gave Murray the strength, the wisdom, the courage, and the guidance 
to go through what she had to face uh, as she went through it in her life. Mary worshipped the merciful God. The psalmist describes the God of Israel as a very pleasant help in trouble. Psalms 46.1 Mary felt God was with her. And even though she did not understand, even though she knew gossip, even though she knew Joseph wouldn't understand what was going on, and Joseph could have had her stoned to death, she trusted in the Lord. And you know what? The Lord took care of her. And the Lord will take care of us if we will trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior and trust in Him. Mary suffered the pains of motherhood, not only in the birth experience, but among the pathway of life that she went. Not only in the difficulty of the birth, but in the life that she went. We'll look at that in just a, month, in a minute. But Mary didn't understand all about Jesus. She learned, as we're learning this epidemic, she learned as she went. And when uh, Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the temple to the Passover. And they left a day's journey back, going back home to Nazareth. And as they started looking for Jesus, they thought he was among the caravan. As they started looking for him, they couldn't find him. So they went back to Jerusalem and found Jesus in the temple teaching the teachers. And he said unto them, when uh, they found him, Jesus said, Why are you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what she was saying to them. His mother did not understand. She could not understand that Jesus was born to be the Son of God. Mary would sympathize with modern mothers of teenagers today. But we lo she loved Jesus, no matter what. Mary's other children did not understand Jesus' ministry when he was there. They did not trust him and believe he was who he said he was until after the resurrection. And Mary felt such pain when her son was rejected by the people of her hometown in Nazareth. Mary suffered the horrible shame of seeing her son arrested, falsely accused, convicted, condemned, and crucified. Just think of the pain that this mother watched her son being arrested, watched her son falsely accused, watched her son beaten, and watched her son nailed to the cross. The agony and pain that she must have felt when uh, she was there. Because it says, John 19, 25, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. She was watching all of this that he was going through. And just think the pain that she must have had during this time. In no way can we fully understand the agony of Mary's heart during these terrible hours of Jesus' suffering and death. For a parent there is no more greater suffering than when their children suffer. And when their children suffer, they suffer. So did you, uh, Mary ask for this? No. Do we ask for what we go through? No. But Jesus is always with us. And even from the cross, he looked at John and said, Behold your mother. He looked at his mother. Behold your son. He made sure she was taken care of. And after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we find Mary present with those who rejoiced in the victory of Jesus. She saw it was worth what she went through. She saw her son become the Savior of the world. She saw her son die the most cruel type death there could be. But she saw her son when he rose from the grave. And when he provided the gift of eternal life to her and to each and every one of us as we come. And she was with them when they prayed in anticipation of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. Mary is an excellent model for mothers today. She had a great faith. She made evidence of her song 
called the Magnificent that we read in our Luke 1, 46-55, Mary's heart was in tune with the heart of God. And as she constantly was open to do the will of God no matter what. Mary believed that God's will was good and that it was something to do be desired instead of something merely to endure. You know, all of us today, we're enduring a lot of things that we never thought we would have to. We're going through a lot of uncertainties that we never thought we would have to. But we need to rely upon God, just as Mary did, to find the strength to do the impossible and to be victorious even through our strength that we have. Mary, as a good role model for mothers everywhere, encouraged purity, prayer, and participation in God's will. In verse 38, Mary was uh, submissive. Her response was immediate, and only one sentence that she gave, uh, uh, she was there. One sentence, she said, her response was immediate. The word handmaid here in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant or the Lord's handmaid. Mary answered, may your word be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. May your word be fulfilled in me. The word handmaid or servant is doula, and it means servant girl. She was a bond slave, willing to sell herself totally and completely to do God's will, no matter what. She surrendered totally to obey God. She would serve Him at His will, being completely obedient and fulfilling His will. Godly mothers not only bring up their children, but they bring their children to God. To know God as our personal Lord and Savior. That is our number one responsibility. To, not to give our children everything that we didn't have, but to give them the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we did have. Today as we come to honor mothers, we need to hold motherhood up in high esteem because Christ did. And we need to be thankful for our mothers, for our godly mothers that we have. Many people don't have a godly mother. But we do, and we need to be thankful. So as we come to this day, I want to encourage you. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you do that today. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by Him. Murray knew this. His brothers and sisters only found out after His resurrection. You and I have this. To have victory in our uncertainties, look to Jesus. And maybe you're here today and you don't have a church home. We invite you to come. And as a three uh, that came this week, we invite you to give me a call or come by and see me and everything. And we will present you to the church. After I talk with you, I'll present you to the church the following Sunday. But you know, being a member of the church, being a good person, being a preacher, a deacon, or whatever is not will not save you. The only thing that will save you is to ask Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. So today, as we come to the conclusion of this service, as we come to be get ready to go out and say thank you to our mothers in whatever way you can today, and to remember your mothers, let us be thankful that God gave us our mothers. And let us be thankful for Murray, who gave her son over to do God's will and to serve him. And she served him, and because she served him, her son and her, his brothers and sisters served, him also, served God also. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Let us close in a word of prayer. Father God Almighty, thank you for that beautiful day that you've given to us. Thank you, God, for Murray and the model that she has for all mothers. And God, thank you for your presence with us. And as you were with Mount Murray and gave her the strength, the faith, the courage to live in purity, live in obedience, 
and live in victory even in the midst of uncertainty. We thank you that you give us that also, God. Father, thank you for your presence. Be with us as we go our way and as we let our, our mothers know that we love them and care for them. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. May God be with each one of you today.